The Bandit, otherwise called Eskia, 1996 Turkish film, directed by Yavuz Turgul. Uh, Jem, you suggested this one. Um, so f- two questions to you, actually. First one, what made you want to choose this film, first of all? And secondly, what were your first impressions? I think, I think this, uh, this could be a very short review. <laughs> um, <laughs> my first impressions, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll come back to my, all my initial thoughts. But my, my first impressions of the film were the... I, I don't watch many foreign films. And so you, you, when, you, when you focus on a film and you've got subtitles it's great because you get to a certain point when you're no longer reading consciously and you, you're just watching the film and you, you don't think about right i've got to read the subtitles but the problem with that is you you zone out if, and, and in any normal film you can zone out and it's okay because you can still hear it but if you zone out on the subtitles you you miss everything you, you can't you can't pick up on it and being two hours long with a film like that, you, you can zone out and then it becomes tricky. <laughs> um, I initially picked it because it had good reviews and I thought, I don't watch many foreign films, um, let's give it a shot. If I had to guess, having known nothing about it, what year it was made, I probably would have guessed late 70s. Um, but it's, it's filmed in 1996 and I don't know whether that's reflection on the, the Turkish film industry or, or the direction. Is that um, like what you're saying it looked budget? Just just little things like like yeah, you know, people get shot and uh, and then there's no blood. Uh, and then uh, it will cut to it cut to a still with some ketchup on them and then uh, you know, it, it just it, the whole thing felt dated and not dated in in a way that you can watch some of the, some of the great older films. It was just dated, full stop, um, and I felt that that it, the film had some had some great themes, but that was too much of a of a, of a negative for me to to really thoroughly enjoy it. I think. Okay, uh, James, what were your initial thoughts from watching Eskia? Um, I don't know whether it's because we've watched two, our last two films have been Mulholland Drive and Inherent Vice, which you have to pay like really close attention to. And the, some of the some of the storytelling is quite subtle in places, but I felt that it was quite heavy handed, let's say with all of its exposition and plot devices that were laid down. I was just like, I can, I can tell what's going to happen happen here. And it, it just, it didn't feel- Even at the end? The end, yeah. What, the shooting star at the end. I was like, I can see this coming from a bloody mile away. This is so budget. Like, I, I thought that this, uh, and I do think that it it was a little, yeah, clumsily put together. And I do agree with you as well, Gem. That for me, when I was watching it, I, I very rarely pick up on um, like visual effects as a, as like that detracts from the experience. I'm actually not very picky about it at all. But I was watching this going like, what the, where is the where is the button? And, you, and to the point where you were seeing the cuts where they were deliberately trying to not show you things because you knew they couldn't pull them off with the practical effects within the within the scenes. And I was like, it, it, it for me, I was just a, a bit disappointed. I think with the with the quality of the uh, of the production. Okay, well, I'm going to break the mould here, and I actually quite liked it. Um, so, they, I thought they were, as, 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 I'm not actually, this first Turkish film I've actually ever seen, and I totally understand what you're saying with the, uh, the dating of it, and it looks horribly dated, even though it was filmed in 1996. But I thought it had quite a nice flow to it as a story itself. Um, quite enjoyed, just quite enjoyed watching it actually. I thought um, some really, really nice dialogue in there when it wanted to have some. Um, guess what, kind of what you're saying as well, James, is sort of where those pieces actually mesh together with the rest of the storyline in terms of it was trying so hard to deliver some of this dialogue and prophetic fallacy and just using its poetic license, as Tom would like to say, uh, that oh, oh, maybe- that must be a language barrier though. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the subtitles yeah. could have easily deceived yeah. that. But um, as a film on the whole, I didn't think it was bad. I really, I didn't think it was bad. Tom, what did you think? 
I literally thought it was one of the worst films I've ever seen. Really? <laughs> I, <laughs> I just, it was straight for the joke. Yeah, I, it's did, a, I, I really It's not even a Channel awful. 5 in the afternoon, that one. It wouldn't even make it a Channel 5. It was like it, it was like an it was like an AS film student's first project, some of it. Um, Savage. I just felt like the pace of the storylines was like horrendous. They rushed so many like key pe- key uh, phases. Um, like James said, the production just felt really, really, really cheap and like really amateurish. Like even when he's running on the rooftops. It's like like he stops and then looks both ways and then pauses and then runs again. It's, and it's like, it would be comical, but it's not meant to be a comical film. Um, I don't know, I was trying to find a redeeming feature with it because normally like these older films, like you said, they would it'd be charming, but you know it's from 1996. If it was like an early 60s film, you'd forgive the ketchup sachets and the horrific firecrackers that go off in people's shirts. Um, but, but I didn't find any charm in it. Like, everything was massively, massively overacted. Um, it's like, to a terrible extent. And then the emotional scenes were poorly acted. So you didn't get anything from it, in my, my opinion. But, um, yeah, it was all just very, like, melodrama at the, at the chaotic scenes. For example, when he's getting shot in the street and then the final bullet goes in and he jumps about six foot off the ground, even though he's already lying and he's yeah, got six bullets yeah. in him. And it's... It's it's just everything. It's it reminded me. And then me gets of, to the top of the rooftop. I don't know if you've seen any. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen any like <laughs> Bollywood movies or Hindi movies. Yeah, where like everything is like very kind of like overacting and loud, but they're quite they're quite fun because they have so much going on. Whereas this like was meant to be serious, but still had that overacting. I thought, yeah, strong opinion. I know, but um, but but yeah, I I just struggled with it. Liam. Yeah, same way. I struggled with it. I never felt like I entered the film. I felt like I spent the whole thing just kind of judging it and um, trying to find, you know, redeemable, uh, you know, scenes, characters, this, that, and the other. And I just, it was all just so stagey. Um, Like, the dialogue never felt like it was coming out of the moment. I could always see the pen of of the writer writing it. I could just the same thing i could see the actors rehearsing like some of the movement and the blocking was really stagey like you could just you can see it being done behind the scenes it didn't feel real it didn't feel like um the the dynamics of the scene were kind of natural it didn't feel like there was much life in it um the actors were trying but like trying too hard i feel like sometimes and i and i and it's difficult with a film like this because you need the bandit the protagonist the central character you need him to have to hold some kind of weight, you know. You need um, you need him to have some weighty kind of like myth and some kind of legend behind him that gives him this reputation that kind of like makes you unsure of him or fear him or something along those lines. And I just never felt that with him. And I always I felt like his um, character work was a bit messy. Like sometimes I don't know if the actor knew quite who he thought the character who he thought the character was meant to be. Like. Sometimes he's really calm and resolved and he's quite formidable. Like in that opening scene when, he, when he's with that matey, he goes to his house and the guy's like, you're going to kill me and all that shit. I was like, all right, this guy's kind of interesting. He just disappears and, you know, there's this interesting kind of like um, mysterious aspect to him. And then like in the next few scenes, he's just, he's just banging like really wildly and melodramatically on the prison door and there's just, there was nothing that he did that felt like it justified such a leap in character and I found that like quite a few times sometimes with the other characters as well there were certain scenes that just felt really trite um a little waffly like they were just explaining plot like yeah. they, they were just yeah. Explain, yeah. they would just explain scenes that had already happened or like they would explain some background about a character and I just never felt the weight of it I just felt like you're just you're telling me too much you're not showing me enough and you're not doing enough for ha- to have me invest in the characters for the duration of the film. So I was constantly looking for the how long the film had left. Like I just kept thinking, well, yeah, so. I just I just kept thinking, well, I just, I want to go to bed. Basically, I just felt like I needed to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a question because like a lot of us have a similar opinion here, and we've all have clearly seen that it's got really high reviews. What, what I'd be interested to think why you would why this why a film like this would have such That's, high high reviews do you, do you think that's exactly what i what i consider i, I thought there must be a, a, a 
a cultural thing. Like, right? Obviously, if, if you're Turkish, you, you're going to try and celebrate Turkish cinema, right? So obviously, that uh, I'm assuming that was no, nominated for their their domestic film of the year type stuff, and and I can only assume that there's there's something to do with like the the Turkish equivalent of Bandit that is quite famous and like that that is quite a big cultural thing. It's not not quite the same, but like. You know, there's lots of like pirate films or something like that here, sure. here, in the in the West. You think like are, are bandits this this big famous thing out at, in Turkey, and and they, they kept referring to him as 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 bandit, and and people like the uh, the new age uh, like mafia equivalent boss, you know, called called him an outdated bandit, and then I just, there was there was almost so much emphasis on the word bandit, whereas you refer to someone as a bandit in, in English or in, in like the West, it, it's not it's not really anything. You think okay, it's someone who, who breaks the law and robs and steals. Yeah, uh, I mean, you you mentioned that point, but I almost think that it probably was a film that was kind of of its time. There's quite a lot of commentary about the the old and the new way of life and how Istanbul as a city is just a massive departure away from a simpler time like that is that is quite a strong commentary that runs throughout it and you look at the old characters within that film and some of you know their arcs are all quite like saddening they're all they're all quite morbid as well how they all end and I imagine that if you were watching that of like of the time in Turkey, and you were someone who could empathise with that. You would have a much you'd be way more affected by the film. Would have a much greater impact on you than say us watching it now in the present day with probably some subtitles which don't even capture some of yeah. the dialogue properly. Because I found myself at times watching like did some lines about him being the bee to come and pollinate and this flower I was like what yeah, the is. fuck is this this is not landing for me I don't get this point you're trying to be profound and it's just not hitting the mark symbolism um, is probably always yeah. difficult to translate yeah. so, maybe that's uh, just your ignorance James maybe that's just your ignorance to the language <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm going to have my work cut out here tonight Jesus Christ um, yeah Back, yeah, I, I like James said. I thought obviously those the theme of the old and the new ran really, really tightly through it, um, all, all the way through from that. Yeah, the old world of thieving and bandits to the modern day gangster of the of the time. I think obviously the lo- yeah the lo- the location and just the 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 industry that is the film industry in Turkey is obviously going to be totally different. But I think you have to. You have to give that some benefit of doubt with that because it is just going to be different. It's not going to be the same standard of the UK and the US industry no, of 1996. No, I don't know about that. I really no, don't know about that. that. No I... chance. That's, I've got three Turkish films, which are like some of my favourite films of all time. They're like straight nines. I've watched them like two or three times each and they're beautiful, beautiful, poetic films. This is not Nuri Bilge Ceylan. And his stuff is like some of the best cinema I've ever seen. And 